So there are Democrats that didn't vote for Illinois' gun ban in the House and in the Senate. And that, of course, was in the final days of the lame duck session of the 102nd General Assembly. Well, uh, of course, they haven't been really back in action. Uh, Yesterday, the Senate came back and uh, they were in session doing some issues with the rules and committees and such. Uh, But uh, I was able to to approach several of the Democrats that were either listed on the uh, vote for the gun ban and registry as either voting no or listed as NV, which means not voting. Uh, and it was interesting because uh, you know these these individuals, they're elected officials. Uh, they uh, they they are paid for by tax dollars. They are uh, either uh, appointed if somebody uh, resigned from the the jurisdiction they're in, and then they get appointed to that office, uh, or they uh, have won an election uh, and are uh, you know of course uh, responsible to constituents. Uh, but uh, you you would typically think that you know they would want to speak about the vote they took or the vote they didn't take, uh, especially when it comes to an issue as controversial controversial as the gun ban and registry. So um, I had the list of uh, Democrats that uh, voted on this before it ultimately passed and was enacted January 10th. Here locally, uh, you have uh, State Senator Doris Turner, which I still have that request out for an interview. I'd love to bring her on the air here. We've talked before in the past. Would hope to talk with her about this issue and more things. Definitely want to see what her priorities are in the legislative session heading forward, uh, especially with the the budget season that's going to start up. But I want her to talk about uh, why she voted no on the gun ban and registry. Uh, She's listed as voting no. I approached her twice yesterday, and I've texted her multiple times to try to get uh, some kind of comment and have not gotten anything back, at least virtually. But yesterday in person, uh, I approached her as she was uh, walking into the Senate, asked just for two minutes, not even that, maybe one minute, just so that she could explain her no vote uh, on the gun ban. And uh, she she said, no, she's got to get into the Senate chambers. She's expected to be in her seat by 10 o'clock. And it was like five till. So she got into the chamber, uh, declined the interview. Uh, and then I, uh, uh, you know, waited for her and and others to come out uh, uh, while they were in session, which took about 30 or 45 minutes for them to even start up. Uh, but as others were coming in, another one was Patrick Joyce. He's from the uh, Kankakee area. He voted no, a Democrat. Uh, I asked him for comments and he declined and, and walked in uh, to the to the session. Several others uh, were listed as no votes. One was uh, the state senator um, Linda Murphy, and uh, she told me that she wasn't even in town, uh, so she couldn't even have voted on it if she wanted to. Uh, so uh, others were as well. I believe uh, Linda Elman uh, was another one, or Laura Elman, I believe, um, voting um, uh, not voting, also was not in town for that vote. Uh, so some interesting uh, responses there. Uh, but uh, other Democrats I approached, former state representative of Mike Halpin, uh, who's now a state senator, he voted no while in the House in the previous General Assembly. Well, as a state senator, he was walking out of the chamber. I saw him. I approached him, asked him for comment. He declined to provide comment. Uh, The only person who did provide comment, the only Democrat that provided comment to me yesterday that I approached was State Senator Dave Kaler out of Peoria. He's listed as not voting, so NV next to his name on that gun ban. Uh, this is what he had to say when I approached him uh, to explain his vote uh, and something that I think is uh, pretty important. And we'll get to that coming up here in just moments on WMAY. So stay tuned if you want to hear uh, what exactly the uh, uh, the state senator from Peoria had to say was the reason for his no vote. Uh, we'll have that in just a moment. We'll also hear from the Senate Minority Leader, John Curran, uh, about this overall issue and even his sheriff and his jurisdiction uh, not supporting Supporting or enforcing the gun ban. So we'll hear that as well. Coming up here on WMAY. And as always, you can sound off at 217-629-7970. That's the phone number. And uh, you can email Bishop on air at Gmail. Been sharing with you the experience I had yesterday trying to get some of the Democrats at the Illinois State House who voted no or decided to not vote at all for the gun ban. And of about five or six different Democrats, let me see here. Three, four, five. So, yep, yeah, about six different Democrats I approached yesterday who either voted no or didn't vote. Uh, they didn't want to go on record, except for one of them who was listed as not voting, and that was State Senator Dave Kaler from Peoria. Uh, and he shared with me uh, some of the uh, the thoughts behind why he decided not to vote for it. 
Uh, here he is yesterday talking with me at the Illinois State House, uh, which is uh, temporarily for the Senate over in the Hallett Building. But uh, here is uh, Senator Kaler. Yeah, well, there's, there's uh, things in the bill that I support. There's things in the bill that I don't support. And uh, so, you know, this is uh, one of those issues that uh, uh, is polarized on, on both sides. And so um, at that moment, I just felt like I couldn't I couldn't do either thing. So. So what did you, you heard from constituents? Um, the usual that uh, you know, there's folks on one side and folks on the other side, and they they uh, you know have very strong opinions and, and emotions about this. Uh, uh, so we'll you know wait to see what what happens in the courts, and uh, we may have to come back and uh, look at some other other fixes. But uh, uh, you know, it's it, legislation is always kind of shades of gray, and uh, some sometimes on on uh, these kinds of issues, uh, I just felt like I, I couldn't go either way. Can you intimate like what specifically you did? No, I'm not, not going to go into the details. So again, uh, Senator Dave Kaler out of Peoria, uh, willing to talk with me briefly about this, uh, but the other Democrats I approached uh, didn't. Uh, I even waited throughout the Senate's uh, duration to get them coming out after they didn't have to be in the chamber, get them coming out. Uh, and uh, really, not any, anybody else, none of the other Democrats wanted to uh, go on record. The invitation's still open. I, I, I will approach others, even those when the House comes back next week. I'll be asking the Democrats there uh, whether or not uh, they want to share why they voted against the gun ban. Um, and some are already saying that, listen, uh, even on uh, a text message I just got, they already had enough votes to win and told them to vote no for strategic reasons. That's why uh, they're ducking me. Um, one in particular, he says, uh, would never vote against the party without being told. Uh, interesting. So, yeah, uh, is it a strategic issue? Is it something that deals with, uh, you know, um, not wanting to uh, disturb a conservative base in their blended district uh, while also not wanting to talk about it because it could give ammunition to, no pun intended, to even more progressive candidates to challenge them in a primary? Uh, fascinating. Now, we did just talk with Richard Pearson about this uh, uh, in the last uh, half hour, and uh, he did share some of his thoughts as to why exactly Democrats aren't sharing, at least with me, why they voted no uh, in a one-on-one uh, -on -one interview. And here's what he had to say. Well, there's tremendous pressure by their own caucus on the, on the downstate Democrats uh, because they, uh, they, they don't agree with all the things that the Chicago Democrats want to do. So we have a split uh, there in the Democrat Party. And uh, so that is uh, that's something they have to deal with. But not everybody believes that this law is a good one. They were actually, they, uh, the legislators, may were bullied into it, and uh, so and into voting for it, I should say. And so they are, they, they, they're not happy with this. Um, it wasn't a clearly vetted law. We were never invited to put any input on the law, nor was any other gun group that I know of. So this was a simply a, a power grab by the. Uh, Democrat caucus in the state of Illinois. So again, that was uh, Richard Pearson, uh, Illinois State Rifle Association Executive Director, when we talked with him uh, in the last hour. And you can find that conversation at my YouTube channel. Just search Bishop on Air or on Twitter, Bishop on Air as well. Uh, so continuing on with more conversation at the State House yesterday about firearms and in particular about uh, sheriffs across the state not enforcing the law. The Senate's Republican leader, John Curran, he is from Downers Grove, he was asked yesterday during an unrelated news conference about uh, a sheriff in his jurisdiction that's uh, refusing to enforce the state's gun ban. And here's some of what uh, John Curran had to say yesterday. Look, we, we need to take a more broader view of this of that issue. We need to reduce crime. We need to hold those that are committing um, illegal gun crimes more accountable. Uh, we have a turnstile criminal justice system, and, and our solution to that is turning and placing more impediments on law-abiding citizens. That, that issue now is in the court system. It's being challenged. That's the appropriate venue for that to be challenged, and, and we're, the court's going to guide us on what is and is not constitutional. Thank you all so much. I can do follow-ups outside. So, again, that was uh, John Curran uh, answering a question about um, the sheriff's not 
enforcing this and a majority of sheriffs across the states that say they are not going to enforce this. We'd love to get your thoughts. 217-629-7970. That's the phone number here. Uh, not just about uh, you know the, the, the uh, Democrats that voted no or were listed as not voting, uh, not really willing to, to talk with media, even media in their own jurisdiction, uh, about why they voted no. Uh, or you can sound off on uh, the progression of these cases moving forward. There are, what, like seven different cases, at least from my count, uh, where you've got uh, some movement happening for uh, the the challenge against the state's gun ban. Uh, but, of course, uh, call in at 217-629-7970. That's the phone number, 217-629-7970. Uh, taking a look here at some of the comments. Uh, you've got uh, a bunch of comments on YouTube that are pouring in, uh, looking at a variety of things in particular. Let's say um, they're talking about funding lawsuits. Uh, which uh, which lawsuit do they want to fund? Um, somebody else says, um, Ray says, sorry, but by not voting, you just showed everyone you are spineless. In my opinion, you're just as terrible as the rest, they say. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah, sound off and uh, let your voice be heard. Uh, 217-629-7970, or you can email bishoponair at gmail.com. Uh, this is going to be an ongoing uh, story that we cover, uh, and it's uh, something I think that has many facets to it, not just tracking the lawsuits that are going to be changing day by day, but also tracking the opinions, uh, including those who um, – are looking to uh, uh, you know, prohibit this law from advancing. Uh, and uh, we'll obviously uh, cover whatever the governor has to say and whatever uh, the filings are back and forth because you do have an appeal that's been filed in at least one state-level case and uh, expected a response that was filed overnight from Attorney DeVore to that appeal to the 5th Judicial Appellate District in Illinois. Uh, but again, you've got uh, a ton of other moving pieces. Uh, so let's get to your calls real quick here. Good morning. You're on WMAY. What's up? You're on Hello. the air. Hi, this is Robert Beavis from Law Weapons in Naperville. All right. I just wanted to let you know that, we, hi, Greg, we also uh, filed a federal lawsuit, and uh, ours was filed back in August, I believe, or August, September, and against the city of Naperville, and then we went ahead and uh, amended our complaint that's to right. include the state of Illinois. I did see as that. Well, and, so, I did see that. Yeah. Uh, so that's an eighth case that uh, you guys are looking to essentially broaden the scope of your uh, ban uh, challenge in Naperville, and I believe Highland Park as well was wrapped into that. So this is now what, like an eighth case, an eighth federal case? Correct. Yes, yeah. so ours is filed uh, like again back in September. <laughs> So we are fully briefed and waiting for the judge to actually uh, rule on it. So hopefully we'll be able to get a TRO uh, entered here very soon on that case. And uh, that will also protect all of the citizens in Illinois. Well, could you possibly keep me posted on that? I think I have a note from uh, the attorneys there in my email somewhere that uh, just talks about how you guys have filed to broaden out the scope of this to not just be about the uh, local gun ban, but also to wrap in the state gun ban. Uh, so I'll have to pull that case back up and, and track along with that. But if you could, uh, just send me a note uh, with little little bits of, hey, this is happening here, this is happening there, uh, especially if there's a court case uh, hearing, a date schedule. Scheduled, uh, please do keep me posted, and you can email me, bishoponair at gmail.com. All right, I'll do that. I'll get that out to you today along with a copy of the entire uh – uh, complaint. Wonderful. Greatly appreciate that. All right. You said, you're, a lot, Greg. You said uh, what was the name of your business again in Naperville? It's called Law Weapons, and uh, we're located in Naperville. And uh, again, like I said, we've been, we've been fighting this battle from the city uh, since September. We were able to get a stay uh, in that case and then went ahead and amended it to include everybody in the state here uh, on the state ban. So I'll get a copy of it over to you, and I yeah. you know, let everybody know that we're, well, and we're just, in and the just, fight as well. Absolutely, and just and just briefly here, what's it been like as a gun store having to deal with these types of restrictions and having to go through the courts and all of that? Well, I'll tell you, from the beginning, when Naperville actually uh, you know, got this ordinance in place, we wound up losing about 70% of our customers. Uh, everybody started saying, oh, they're worried about us getting closed down by this and they started going other places 
uh, even canceling back orders to the tune of $32,000 in less than two weeks. So since then, we've lost lots of customers. It's been a big struggle uh, to keep the doors open, uh, keeping people informed, plus the you know countless amounts of money that we've spent uh, personally from the company uh, to file for these lawsuits and, uh, and pay this. We're working with the National Gun Rights uh, Association, and they've been helping us uh, quite a bit, but it's expensive. So we've been on air with uh, Genie Ives and a few others out there, along with some of the news stations, trying to raise uh, money for support for this thing. But but uh, the be- we're staying open to be able to educate everybody and explain what's going on. So we field hundreds of phone calls a day on what's going on and trying to just educate everybody. So we greatly appreciate it if you could just let people know that we're here to help. I will, and, 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 and I will include, and I will include your case in my consistent coverage. Now that makes it what eight cases that have counted here that uh, are challenging this. Yours, of course, uh, before the gun ban went into effect statewide, but you're uh, amending that to include. Correct statewide gun ban i uh, greatly appreciate you yeah, calling in and letting us know about that and please do keep me posted absolutely greg i'll get you out an email here in a little bit great it is springfield's morning much. news thank you uh and we got much more to come here so of course you can always reach out bishop on air at gmail.com bishop on air at gmail.com